Okay, you've just received your Mondola V3. Let's open it up. There it is. Little note here, please go to manual.mondolav3.com to get started with your V3. That's highly recommended to uh, look through the manual. So let's take it out. Here's the pad, USB cable. So let's hook it up and have a go. The first thing we'll do is mount the Mondola and it mounts onto uh, standard L rods up to 10.5 millimeters. So uh, we're just gonna position it right over this L rod, come down on it and then tighten up the wing nut and that's on there nice and secure now. So your Mondola is mounted and it's time to plug in. Next, we're going to connect the drum. So there's a USB port on the back of the pad and we're going to take a USB cable from our computer and connect it right here. If you want to verify that you connected and you're on a Mac, go to Audio MIDI Setup and under Window, Show MIDI Studio. And when you connect your pad, the icon will appear just like that. Okay, now that you've plugged in the pad and you verified that it's connected to your computer, uh, whether it be Audio MIDI Setup in a Mac or in Device Manager in Windows under Sound, Video, and Game Controllers, um, let's go to the V3 Utility app, which is not required, but it's a good way to monitor what the drum is doing, and I'll show you how you might want to change the output configuration of your pad. So it runs in a browser, um, Web MIDI compatible browser. Google Chrome is one of those, so is Edge for Windows, uh, Safari is not, and iOS is not. But here is the V3 Utility program, and you can resize it if you want. Uh, there's a graphic representation of the drum here uh, for when you hit zones they will light up and down here is where you uh, see which notes the zones are outputting when you hit them for the surface and the rims along with their ch channels you can turn any zone on or off here or any controller on or off um, and when you make changes here they automatically change in the pad and it saves in the pad so you can disconnect from here and plug into something else and it'll have this, the most recent setting that you've uh, configured here. Anyway, here is a MIDI input uh, monitor for what's coming from the pad and here is the pad that you've got plugged in. And uh, when you do plug it in, by the way, what you'll see is it will populate that window and the light will blink while it's configuring. And you don't wanna be pressing on the drum while it's configuring and calibrating so it stays as sensitive as possible. And um, this would be a preset load window for different configurations of the drum. It defaults to trigger map. And now let me uh, show you what happens when you hit the zones of the drum. Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, and then you've got the rims. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, those are represented in the graphic up here. You also have controllers, which are, you'll see if I strike in a zone and I hold it, like I'm holding zone one right now on the surface, you'll also see the slide parameter as the stick moves from center to edge. And that can be assigned to any controller number or pitch bend or after touch. And so uh, I can hold zone three and you'll see the slide happening. Also I can press on the surface and you'll see here that's the real-time readout of how much pressure I'm putting on the surface. And each of the rims has that as well. So for example, if I squeeze rim one and press on it, it goes from zero to 127. Same with two, three, and so on. And so that could be with your thumb or your hands or with your sticks, you could be pressing, pressing on the surface and changing the uh, controller output. So now that you've seen basically the output from the pad. Um, like I said, not required to open this program, but it is a good monitor. Let's open a program now and trigger some sound. I'm gonna open up Logic and uh, we can trigger a few plugins from within Logic. So let's get going on Logic here. Um, and I'll just do an empty project 
and uh, open up a software instrument track which will have battery on it. Um, so we'll just hit create and uh, up comes battery. Um, I've got a layout I've made which is just 13 sounds, one for each of the zones. Um, and so just like that, zone one, two, three, four, and then the rims. So, uh, there you go. You're triggering right off the bat. And um, there's a lot of presets in programs like battery. So, uh, I could do something like go back to the utility and um, let's pull up a preset which is percussion map which is a more straightforward uh, triggering layout from the pad which has more of a traditional setup and load one of these kits here um, I don't know let's just load up a 808 tune kit or a 808 multiple kit how about that so now you've got quick way to just get rolling with the mandala. Um, let's do something different just for a second. Now, uh, let's close that battery channel. Uh, let's go back to the utility and just go back to trigger map, which is the default, which is a little more tonal. And we'll go back and let's do track, new software instrument track. And instead of battery this time, let's pull up Alchemy, which is a synthesizer, but it's a sample-based synthesizer and it's got a lot of options. So I'm just gonna go to something here like drums and go to, uh, I don't know, one example in their presets, Future Junglist, and the result will be something like <laughs> something kind of say synths and take a look at uh, one of the presets like mm, bass patterns and here's an example of that gets you on your way with the mandala uh, on the software end the possibilities are endless really with what you're triggering uh, you could be plugging in five pin midi to hardware also and trigger your synths your hardware synths and whatever gear you have so uh, hopefully you have a good time experimenting and uh, also doing a lot of traditional stuff <laughs>